Flexibility training. Know the ACSM recommendations for flexibility training. The good news is flexibility is something that pretty much everybody can generally work to improve. And it's lifelong. As we get older, we're going to lose flexibility. So especially with special populations, older adults, people with chronic diseases, flexibility becomes really important. So we will go through the FITT VPP for flexibility exercise. So flexibility, very similar to resistance training, minimum of two days a week, you know, and the more the better. So stretching is something that people can actually do every day. So, uh, you know, so if P, especially if people are not flexible, they really should work to improve. Let's try to get them to at least an average level on their flexibility test. The intensity, stretch to the point of tightness. So you don't need to stretch or have your clients stretch until their muscles shake, just till they start to feel tight. The time, aha, holding a static stretch for 10 to 30 seconds. And most of us probably do pretty well with that. Older individuals holding a stretch for up to a minute may be more beneficial. And then PNF stretching, and we can go through this in class for demonstration, and that's a partner-assisted stretch. Three to second um, maximal contraction followed by a 10 to 30 second assisted stretch. So we will double check, you know, that everybody understands what PNF or modified PNF stretching is when we get to class. Type, a series of flexibility exercises for the major muscle groups especially exercises if people are doing the same type of movements over and over again. So if you're someone who runs, you're probably going to have to really focus on hamstrings, walkers, runners, calves. What are the muscles involved with that movement? So are they going to the types of flexibility? And we'll review these in class, you know, active or passive, dynamic, ballistic, static stretching, what are the different types of flexibility? So different things are gonna, different types of flexibility training are gonna be beneficial to different people. No longer do they say, you know, static is good, ballistic is bad. It's really who is your client, you know, so to develop the individualized approach. Uh, reasonable target volume, 60 seconds of stretching for each flexibility exercise, pattern, this is interesting because although a lot of us probably meet the time of a 10 to 30 second static stretch, we probably do not do two to four repetitions per muscle group. And you also want to be sure under the pattern slide that muscles are warm. So typically people have either do a warm up and they stretch or more commonly at the end of the workout, people will do their flexibility training. And that's kind of why it often gets ignored because people are doing it at the end of the workout. You know, progression, everybody's going to have a little bit individual basis, just like anything else. There's a genetic component. Some people are really gonna to respond to flexibility training while others are not. So, you know, we don't really know how much people are going to progress, but the goal is if you've got uh, norm table, try to get people to at least an average level of flexibility. If they can go beyond that, then that's fabulous. You can, you know, set some SMART goals for that. The, one of the nice things about classes like yoga and Pilates is they're a great way to get people involved with flexibility training when they might not otherwise be interested in doing it. So, um, and, but we'll review all of these in class, all the different types of stretching and what they involve.